you got to love the British weather. I know it's only February and I should expect it, but it's really nice and sunny, but it's absolutely chucking it down. I was going to clean a car today, but hey, I need an indoor task. So luckily for you guys, or not so luckily, I'm not sure which way you want to take this. I've still got some microfibers here from the video I did two weeks ago. And today we're going to be looking at what I do before I store them and how I store them. So let's dive into this. Hi guys, yes, so welcome back. Then as I said, we did touch on this a couple of weeks ago on how to wash microfiber towels, how to wash them properly and safely. And the basically the rule was low and slow. So low temperature, low speeds, just don't go too hot and don't rush anything. Here I've got a bunch of towels. These look like some of the generic towels. That's a good example on the bottom because that one's got some bits on it. In fact, both of those stacks that are dry are generics. These hanging up here are just a bit fluffier and thicker. These are my wax removal towels, basically. So they've been drying out in here. Before I get into this, I did see a comment on the microfiber wash video. Um, I can't remember who from right now. And he mentioned a good point. Um, basically, air dry the towels. So I know I mentioned either air dry or tumble dry or 50-50, tumble dry than air dry. He air dries the towels and then gives them 10 minutes in the tumble dryer before he puts them away to fluff them up cracking tip anyway with the towels all clean and dry then there's two things we need to do next um, well three actually sort them out into types of towels inspect the towels as i said mine are already sorted out anyway but inspect the towels and then we'll put them away which we'll do in a moment now for inspecting the towels and kelly at ks can probably vouch me this one here is standing out there's a bit of red lint on this a bit of red cloth i was constantly at KDS, picking a fresh towel or a brand new towel and finding little bits of black fiber or something, something from somewhere, because they go through a wash cycle when they first get them brand new. <laughs> I think Kelly just had to keep telling me, just leave it alone, we're filming, we're filming. I'll pick a towel up and check them. What I'm getting at here is, yes, you want to go through these before you put them away. However, depending on how you store them, which we're going to get onto in a moment, I wouldn't worry too much um, because you're probably going to end up double checking it before you use it anyway. I know I'll, I always do and I know some people will want to make sure they are immaculate so they can just grab it without checking it. But I always give them a double check anyway. In my hand here, I have obviously a baby now. I've got a couple of these so this is one he's not using. And just give these a brush just to uh, ideally on a flat surface. This conservatory is full of boxes. I have got nowhere to do this right now other than going back into the kitchen. And I can see a bit of white thread just there. Pick that off. And just basically with a nice soft brush, go through. One, this fluffs up the fibres. And two, it will help you get out these little niggly bits. If you can see that. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera. A little bit just there. This will brush that out. I'm not going to go through this and do every single one on camera because that's going to bore you and quite honestly bore me. So, <laughs> yeah, first thing to then is inspect every towel. Just have a quick look at them. If you can pick the little fibers out, pick them out. If there's anything that's too harsh, you might have to demote the towel. So, as I said, these are my waxing towels. These could possibly, if, the, if I thought they weren't fit for wa removing waxes anymore, demote these to all-purpose towels, such as this one. It's got a bit of staining on it now, so I could probably demote that. Anyway, you get the idea. Did I also mention that this was going to have a Q&A in it as well? I can't remember if I said that at the start of the video, but we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A, um, because otherwise it's going to be a very, very short video, and I've had a lot of questions lately. But before we get around to the Q&A and how to store these, I've got a little favour to ask you guys, so... Yeah, let's cut to that segment. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt this video. It's just a quick request from you guys as viewers. I'm working on a project that I've been planning for well over a year now, and it's something I've had in my head for the last five or six years. Um, and basically, I can't go into it too much right now, but I need some old footage and photos from you lovely viewers. Ideally, detailing valeting related, cleaning your car with your parents, or maybe you was old enough to be driving in the 80s and 90s. The older, the better. And... The more footage I can grab, the better as well. Um, of course, you will be fully credited if I do use your videos or your photos. If you can send them on email to randomlyset at hotmail.co.uk, that would be great. Um, I'll put that down here just now. And as long as you've got full ownership and it's your property that you're sending me, 
that's all I ask of you. So, yeah, more information will be coming soon, but for the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So let's take a quick break from sorting out the microfibers then, and first thing to address is the state of this room. So, yep, it looks a mess because I'm about to have this all re-skimmed and make it like a proper editing suite, so to speak. It's a small spare room, um, but it's gonna be as good as I can make it. And you can hear a lot of echo, but yeah, this is all being worked on at the moment, so that's why the walls look a mess. I stripped them all last week. So a couple of questions that we've had recently. Um, LT Ripley1983 Triumph Tiger 800 asks, what's the best way to clean a DS3 Cabrio roof? Now with any Cabrio roof, you want a dedicated soft top cleaner. So Valet Pro do one, I think it's called drop top cleaner, quite simply. A lot of manufacturers will make one. Sometimes they may say you can use the upholstery cleaner. If in doubt, you can start with a weak mixture of all-purpose cleaner and go from there in a soft brush and just work your way up. In fact, I did a car last year, white Mercedes convertible. I'll put a link to that up there. Um, yeah, that shows you how we work through the stages. I've done a few convertibles, but that's pretty much how. So the next one we have then was on the back of the popular wheel cleaners video I did I can't remember when, I think I did that last year, last winter. Um, aiming vlogs or aiming vlogs. What happens if the product goes on the brake disc? Nothing really. I suppose technically if you just left an iron removing product sit on brake discs and by let sit, I mean submerge the brake disc into them, would it dissolve them after a couple of weeks of just sitting there? But day to day or week to week wheel cleaning, don't need to worry about it too much. You're gonna get some overspray onto the brake discs. Um, that's gonna happen. You're gonna be rinsing it off in five minutes. So it really doesn't matter. It's just gonna instantly react to any iron and obviously assuming you've got a bog standard average everyday run of the mill car, you've got steel discs anyway. So yeah, nothing, you don't really need to worry too much about it. So you don't personally want to be going in there spraying them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a non-issue really. Emiliano Gutierrez, I think I pronounced that right, how to clean your leather steering wheel. Do you think Koch Chemi Green Star APC is okay for cleaning leather steering wheels? What will the dilution be? I think, again, start weak. Koch Chemi, I think, can dilute 30 to 1, maybe 50 to 1, but just go weak on the dilution. And again, like with the drop top, you should really use a dedicated leather cleaner if it's genuine leather with a nice soft leather brush. But you can use all-purpose cleaner. I wouldn't use it all the time. Um, get it nice and clean and put a nice conditioner on there as well to try and help future cleaning a bit easier. Um, but yeah, it should be okay for the occasional use and really stubborn stains. But otherwise, just use a dedicated leather cleaner. What else do we have? What Oh, I, IS or iScopes X, I think on the Mazda MX-5 video we did, um, just only a couple of weeks ago in fact, what tire dressing applicator do you use? Now I've used quite a few in my time. Um, the work stuff one I've really liked. I've had that one now for getting on to three years. It was one of the first tooling brands, when I say tooling, you know, accessories, brushes and whatnot um, that supplied us. So getting on to three years, I've had that and it's just starting to peel away, you know, the sponge from the uh, plastic handle as such it's just starting to peel away now um i've used some of the like heavy duty foamy kind of applicators they again the same issue happens the sponge breaks away from that um but most of them are fine um the work stuff one i really do like i hate i hate getting tire dressing on my hands so you have to go out and put a pair of gloves on but any of these ones have got a plastic handle on them or something to keep your hands away from the sponge just gets a thumbs up from me so even those foam backed ones it doesn't absorb the product, so yeah, I forgot where I got that one from now. But as I say, most, I think Stiana Gloss do them, a lot of companies um, will make a tire applicator for you. Um, so yeah, as long as it's something like that, you can if you really want to use a cut up sponge, which is something I will use, but that's when you've then got to go out and put some gloves on as well. Um, and sponges typically only last a couple of applications. And with some products, I've noticed, I think it's the heavy silicone based ones, I think, I'm not, look that deeply into it but there's a couple of products in my garage that if i apply it to a sponge and apply it the sponge is literally just falling apart on the tire um so yeah the jumbo yellow sponges don't always work that great 
So Joe Van Cetus asks, how are you liking the UDOS polisher after now having to use it for a little while? Is it a worthwhile machine? I wish they made a cordless of it. Uh, maybe they will do one in the future. So the UDOS, again, I use that, I think, last year that came, last March time. We did the Range Rover SVR with it, if I remember correctly. Um, really good tool that. I, I know in that video I said I was a bit unsure because of the vibration. That was my personal experiences because at that time, I'd not really used any DAs with more than probably an 8mm throw, something like that. Um, I've always been a rotary person, so I suppose it at the time it wouldn't have mattered if I'd have picked up a big foot, a UDOS, or a Flex, and it was a 15 or 21mm throw. I'd have probably thought, what the hell is this? Um, it was just a bit, yeah, new to me. But the machine as a whole, cracking, cracking idea, really is. And I know they're coming out with, I don't know if they're calling it a V2, I don't know what's happening. Um, but they are tweaking the machine, I believe. But the idea of having five machines in one, so you've got the rotary mode and then four different orbitals. And I'm probably going to butcher this right now, but I think it's 12, 15 and 21. And then there's a sanding mode, which is like five or eight. I think it's eight. Um... I have probably just butchered them right now and I'll crack them on the screen. But the UDOS is a single machine to do everything. It's, yeah, great, great. I really enjoyed using that on that Range Rover and a few other big wagons that I had last year. Um, and now I've got a new one because I had to hand that back. I've now got my own since. I'll be using it a lot this year, but on big flat panels with a large throw, you can easily mow down, as Larry uh, MOMYC says, do the mow down technique um, and then refine it with a rotary setting or a smaller throw setting and a finishing pad. So, yeah, enjoy that. Anyway, enough Q&As then. We'll get back into the garage and uh, yeah, look at how you store the cloths once they're all nice and clean. So that's a few of your recent questions answered then. Anyway, back on storing the towels then, and this is probably something if you're a long time subscriber to the channel, you will have seen this because I've done a couple of garage tours. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see me do another garage tour, actually, and everything's a mess. If you could see behind the camera right now, there's an old dishwasher, warranty replacement, an old armchair, boxes, a broken up wardrobe, all needs to go to skip. Yeah. Anyway, enough of the garage and the current state of it. Storing your towels. You don't want to be leaving them out on the shelf, out on your bench, or anything like that. You want to be putting them away. In a cupboard, it is okay. However, I, if I had cupboards, which you can see I haven't, I'd probably still have them inside storage containers to keep them airtight and stop anything getting into the cloths. I know I said at the beginning, I double check anyway. I know a lot of people don't want to. And I'll be honest, I wish I could just go and pick a cloth up and not really have to worry too much about it. But it's, I can't, I just pick. Anyway, enough of that. I've got these storage drawers here. I've got two of them and um, there's a small one over there. I do need more. I am fully aware of that. I know I'm going to get comments um, below. So here is all my wax towels. So basically just fold these up nice and basically just drop them in. Now normally I will rotate them. So again, I'm not going to do all of this on camera because it's going to bore you, but I will put the fresh ones to the bottom and try and keep them rotated. So it's not always using the same cloths. And then you end up in a situation like I've, I've dug this from the bottom. That's a new cloth that's probably been sat in there a couple of years and never been used because I got, I, I start, I, yeah, I was getting a bit lazy and I was putting clean cloths back into the top like I've just done there right now so I'll, I'll address that off camera do that with all of them um, let's close that properly and same with your really dirty ones now quick question here as I say I've not really got a lot of space do I really need to keep those extremely dirty towels that are good for nothing other than cleaning exhaust arches engines putting under the pedals, as I mentioned in the last video, to catch drips. Do I need to really keep them in an airtight box? Or just throw them in a carrier bag? And then free up one of these drawers. Again, let me know below. The other method of storing them, and this is how I store my drying towels and any brand new towels that I've had. So in this box, for example, basically what I'm saying is, you can also use boxes like this, which is how I used to live um, before I got the garage. I had boxes like this stacked, and I've just snapped that. So in this one, for, for me, 
I keep brand new towels, brand new cloths that I get sent out to test, polishing pads, all sorts in there. But yeah, you'd probably want to use something like that. They cost about five pounds uh, for a box like that, five to 10 pounds, and you can pick them up from your local hardware store or the uh, local household store that we all know and love here in the UK, and you'll have the same over in the States as well. So yeah, it's as simple as that. It's not, as someone commented before in the last video, it's not really rocket science. It's just clean your cloths, low and slow, check them before putting them away, and then store them in a nice, clean place. Speaking of which, that's the first thing I should have said, is wherever it is you are storing them, this one, of course, is perfectly clean. But look right into that empty corner. You can see my finger through it. It's pristine under there. Make sure your boxes are kept clean as well. The outside, yeah, they're gonna get dusty, but that's what they're there for. They're there to catch the dust and the debris that gathers in your garage, your shed, wherever it is you keep them. But yeah, make sure the inside of the box is clean. You've got to all that trouble of making sure your cloths are immaculate. You don't want to put them in a dirty container. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a bit long wind and it's been, and it's been, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I know it's been a bit long winded, a bit different, but the weather's not helped and a bit of a last minute decision to make this one. Oh God. <coughs> Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit long-winded, a little bit all over the place, but as I said, the weather's just suddenly turned today. I wasn't expecting it, so yeah, last minute video. Something keeps happening to my voice there. So <laughs> if you have enjoyed this, make sure you smash that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe icon just here as well. Put a couple of videos here as always, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video.